In this example, we're going to write the equation of the tangent line to the curve f of x equals 1 over x plus 3 at x, at the, if that doesn't make sense, at x equals 1. Maybe I meant to say at the value x equals 1. At x equals 1. Um, so, what I want to draw your attention to is the instructions. It says write the equation of the tangent line. So, we actually, our answer is going to be the equation of the line. And to put this into some perspective, let's, let's actually graph f of x equals 1 over x plus 3 quickly. I know there's going to be a vertical asymptote at negative 3. I know when I plug in 0, I get a third, so that I think means that the This is clearly just a sketch, but it'll get the job done. All right, and so we're looking for the equation of the tangent line to the curve at x equals 1. So there's x equals 1. And so the tangent line is the line that just touches the curve at that one point. So there's the tangent line. So we want the equation of that line. That line has an equation, and we want we want to figure that out. So let's kind of review some algebra topics here. We have a couple of forms of an equation of a line. One of them is standard form, ax plus by equals c. We also have slope-intercept, y equals mx plus b. And then we have one that I, I don't know how often it comes up in algebra classes, it should come up a lot because it's actually the most powerful or the most useful, I think, and that is point slope, this form of an equation of a line. Now the ones we, the one we are going to be using most of the time is this one because, again, all you need to know is any point on the line and then the slope of that line. All right, so we can actually start answering this question right away because <clears throat> I want, uh, I know a point on this, this curve right here. I mean, the, the point of, the point of tangency there is a point on the, on the tangent line. And so that has coordinates, uh, 1, comma, so, 1, comma, and when I plug 1 into the function, I get 1 over 1 plus 3, which is a fourth. So there's my x and my y. So now I can I can even start this by filling in the one fourth of my y coordinate x minus one. So I'm basically two thirds of the way done. What I don't know is the slope. I do not know the slope of the curve. I do not know the slope of the tangent line, and that is where we actually have to do some calculus because. Because the slope of this tangent line is the slope of the curve at that point. In other words, the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x plus 3 at x equals 1. So this, so I'm going to use notation here, this here, to use advanced notation, is f prime of 1, the derivative of the function at x equals 1. So let's go find that here. So, again, we know that the derivative at a point f prime of a is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a okay and in our case a is 1 so for us f prime of 1 is equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x, which is 1 over x plus 3 in our case, minus f of 1, and we can do this in our head, f of 1 is, well, we know it, it's a fourth. f of 1 is a fourth, divided by x minus 1. And, get, and so at this point, we've got our setup. Now it's really just the algebra that we have to focus on. Now here, let me give you a little, um, a little hint here. If you're, you want to show all your work when you do these problems, but if you don't like keep, you don't want to keep writing limit as x goes to one, because obviously we, we can't, 
we have to wait till we can get this x minus 1 to cancel before we plug in. If you want, you can just circle this. This is called the difference quotient. You can kind of circle this, do the algebra on that, and then just don't forget to bring the limit back into the problem later. So let's do that here. Um, so I gotta clean this up. Remember, I can't plug one in. You'll never be able to plug one into the into the expression right away. You'll always be dividing by zero. So our goal is to get that x minus one to cancel so that we can plug in one. And that is guaranteed to happen if we do the right things. So in this case, the only way to make that happen is we, we've gotta combine the the terms in the numerator. And the way to do that is to get a common denominator. So my x minus 1 down there. The common denominator would be, well, this needs a 4 and that would need an x plus 3. Oops, that's not what I meant. They would both need 4's. And this would therefore need an x plus 3, but then I gotta put it on the top. So my numerator now becomes 4 over 4 times x plus 3 minus x plus 3 over 4 times x plus 3. Alright, and now I can combine the the, uh, the fractions in the numerator. So that's equal to 4 minus, now be very careful when you do this because that x plus 3 as a quantity needs to be expressed in parentheses. 4 times x plus 3. And now what I'm going to do is dividing by x minus 1 is the same as multiplying times 1 over x minus 1. right? Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying times a half. So I'm going to write it like that. It might be a little more useful. And let's see what happens when we distribute here. It looks like we get uh, 4 minus x minus 3 divided by 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. By the way, notice I'm, I'm not inter I'm not like multiplying the x minus 1 times the x plus 3. I'm not expanding that out because I don't want to. I want that x minus 1 to divide. So I want to leave it. I don't want to do more work than I need to. Let's kind of shrink this up here. And the numerator now becomes 4 uh, 4 minus a 3 gives me a 1, so I have 1 minus that x over 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And actually, you may not have thought about it, but these actually can divide because this is 1 minus x and that's x minus 1. They're not the same, but they're exact opposites, right? Like 2 minus 1, 2 minus, or 2 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 2 that divides to be negative 1, right? Because the numerator is 1 and the denominator is negative 1. So this is equal to negative 1. So the same logic applies here. These divide and you get a negative 1 at the top. And so now let's bring the limit back in because we, we fixed the problem, that x minus 1. So don't forget now, this is all... The limit as x goes to 1 of negative 1 over 4 times x plus 3. Now I can plug in 1 for x without any problems. So I get negative 1 over 4 times 1 plus 3, which is negative 1 over 1 16th. Okay, so let's just, let's go to our graph. Does that make sense? Does it make sense that the slope of this blue line is negative 1 over 16? That, that, that I think, seems pretty logical. I mean, it's a negative slope for sure, and it looks doesn't look that steep. So negative 1 over 16 for the slope of that line looks good. And to return to our original problem, we were looking for the equation of the tangent line. Finding the derivative gave us that slope. And so in all this business, my final answer is right there. Okay? So make sure you pay attention to directions. If you're asked to find the derivative, well, you would stop when you got to the negative 1 over 16. If you are asked to find the equation of the tangent line, what I have circled in black is your final answer.